day is it? Tuesday. It's Tuesday. It's not our regular scheduled Thursday, but here we are nonetheless. Thank you for joining me. Whew. It is really hot in here. That's that's what's up with the hair. I normally don't go up hair for video, but it is so hot in here. How is everybody doing? I am counting down the days till Halloween. I am... It's been such a busy weekend, but we're not going to talk about Halloween. We're actually going to talk about the new minimalist line. <laughs> that is such a hard word to say, minimalist. We're talking about the minimalist, hi Karen, hi Debbie, uh, line from Jesse James Speeds. And uh, if you guys, it's the minimalist collection. I was just pulling it up so that I can always refer to it. I promise I'm, I'm not being... <laughs> not being rude. Um, I just like to, to be able to pull it up and see what I'm talking about. Make sure that I'm saying words right. That's always hard for me. <laughs> um, so minimalist <laughs> jewelry um, is a huge trend. This has actually been a trend that's been around for a while and it doesn't really look like it's going to be going anywhere anytime soon. And that's actually good news for jewelry makers because Minimal jewelry, let's just leave it at that, minimal jewelry, <laughs> is very easy to work up once you kind of get in the groove of it and switch gears. Oh, thank you, Rachel. Um, then you can really kind of be very, very creative with it. Now, let me explain. Because minimalism and minimalistic, these are just the hardest words ever, jewelry for me was a challenge at first. And it might be for you. So hopefully I will be able to give you some um creative juices here. I can give you some inspiration that you can take and use because I'm used to making big bold statement pieces of jewelry and it's kind of hard to switch gears and think about less being more which goes against everything that I <laughs> am used to. My um you know my my favorite quote is more is more, less is a bore. So minimalist jewelry, that was hard. It was really hard. I even told Sarah, the beads are so beautiful, but it felt like I was doing something wrong. Like when I was making these pieces, it was like, I'm, I'm not, not working hard enough. But the results are absolutely stunning. So hi, Janice. Janice, I saw pictures of your kitty cats today. They are so, so sweet. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Jane. Um, what was I saying? <laughs> Kitty cat's on the brain for just a second. Oh, it took me a while to kind of get into the groove of minimal jewelry because you don't use as many beads, obviously, hence the name. And um, it's not that you're being less creative. You're just being creative in a different way. So it was kind of hard for me to get in that groove. But once I did, I worked up a whole bunch of really pretty pieces. You guys have seen some of them. Um, and so hopefully I can inspire you to do the same. I'm going to show you two pieces from each one of the, the little bead mixes, and, I'm gonna and then we'll flip around here. I'm gonna show them to you on a neck because it's easier for you to see them that way. And then we'll flip around, we'll look at the beads, just real quick, go through the beads, and then we'll put together one of the necklaces that won. You guys voted on um, which necklace design out of the four that Sarah presented on the Secret Stash group, and, um, necklace C is the one that won. So that's the one we're going to do. I am going to change it up just a little bit because we're going to add some stamping to this. If you have not been paying attention to Jesse James beads for the past couple of days, then you have totally missed. There is a huge 33% off sale that is going on right now to celebrate Sarah's birthday. That's 33% off site wide. So take advantage of that. That sale ends at midnight and the stamping is one of those things that everybody really, really loves. So you could certainly take advantage of that 33% off if you wanted to get some stamping stuff from the Jesse James Speeds website for yourself um, or for maybe a Christmas present for a jewelry maker coming up. We're going to be talking more about the holidays coming up in a couple of weeks, you guys. It's It might be a little bit early now, but it's it's about to be. As soon as the clock strikes midnight on October 31st, all bets are off. We're talking about the holidays. So get ready. If you have not started making jewelry for the holidays, it's time to start getting those gears turning too. All right, so let's start with um, some of the necklaces. I do have a couple of pairs of earrings as well. Hi, Kelly. 
Um, I'm going to leave the pink champagne mix for last because that's the one that we're going to use for the necklace that we're going to make today. Okay, so let's start with caramel and cocoa. This is a really beautiful mix, and I made two different necklaces, two very different designs with this, and one of them I used stamping with because, I don't know, when you look up like minimalist jewelry, a lot of times you'll see just these very small understated pendants that have one single stamp on them, so that's sort of where I was going with this guy. So, let's see over here where the light is a little bit better. So this is on very, very tiny gold colored ball chain that you can get over on Jesse James Speeds. It's two strands and you can see that minimalist stamp right there. So that little stamp, I actually think that it might be an eyeball, but it looks like a flame. And so I used it in the direction of it being a flame, but you could use a letter, initials, whatever you wanted to, a flower, a starburst, whatever strikes your fancy. And then all I added was just three of these beautiful check glass beads in the colors that go really well with this gold color. So there's like a brown, there's like this kind of coppery clear that has that, I don't know, I don't really know how to explain it. And then this frosted glass that has just that hint of like a golden brown on it. So when you think of minimalist jewelry, this is where we're going. It doesn't take a lot, but it still makes a really beautiful statement. I think this is probably my very favorite design out of all the ones that I did. This is just, to me, this is kind of the, the epitome of minimalist jewelry. You can go a lot of different ways. I'm gonna show you. you. We can go a lot of different ways with this, but I really, really enjoyed this one. And I'll show you the bead mixes in just a minute when we get turned around. So that was the first one from the Caramel and Cocoa, but then I made another Y style necklace that I also really, really love. And I used ball chain for this one as well. So you can see I only used, I'm trying to hold the, hold the chain back so that it's not longer than the bust. All right, so I only used one, two, three, four beads from the entire package. And that, that means there's a ton, of left, ton left over so I can make even more. More of the same if you wanted to, um, you know, or more of different styles of minimal type jewelry, minimalistic jewelry, if you will. So this was another one of my favorites. I really like this style. This is one of those styles that looks really good with, um, just in my opinion, you can totally rock this however you want to, but with a button up, even denim button up, and you unbutton it just a bit so that this, the Y kind of draws your eye downward, ladies, if you want to do a little flirting, you know what I mean? But it also looks really beautiful with cocktail dresses. It's understated, but you still have the bling from the beads. So it's a beautiful piece of jewelry. And the ball chain, this is just a little bit bigger size of the ball chain, but there's tons of really small, beautiful chains on Jesse James Speed's website. So check that out, <laughs> excuse me, because the chains really complement these bead mixes. All right, so the next bead mix is <laughs> uh, Mermaid's Tail. And this, this colorway is, gosh, it's so pretty. And again, I'll dump all these out so we can see them real quick, but I'm just gonna show you the designs this direction. So this is another really minimalist style. I mean, they all are really just, just a tiny pop of color with the hematite chain and then this like seafoam teal. It's not, I don't even know. It almost has that mint color to it. Maybe kind of hard to see, but that's all this that's all this design needed was just a tiny little pop of color from the beads and the chain and the combination of the two just works really really well again another piece that you could dress up you could dress down really really cool so there's that one and then I also made a pair of earrings from this mix and this is one that you guys voted on so in the mixes there are also these really beautiful flower tassels that was also in this mix and so I just created some little dangles here using some of the smaller check glass beads that were in that mix and just stuck one of the tassels there on the bottom and made a pair of earrings out of it and they're really really pretty <laughs> why are you guys laughing <laughs> I feel like I've done something wrong or that I missed something why are we laughing <laughs> all right so 
Next is Crystal Cavern. Uh, this was the first mix that I messed with, or that I created with, rather. So, and it's hard to see on a bust because it is that frosted white crystal. Oh, I just love it. Absolutely love it. So I just cut small sections of chain to put in between each one of the beads. I, I wire wrapped on each side of the bead and then attached it to the wire. So not only is it a minimal amount of beads, but it's a minimal amount of hardware as well. Um, I use just 24 gauge wire and so the wire is very small, which keeps that you know, it, you don't want to add extra to it unless you just feel like that's the way you want to go. I wanted to keep everything understated, including the size of the wire. So that is the necklace that I came up with. Again, dress it up, dress it down, whatever you want to do with it. Very, very beautiful. And then the earrings were just as simple. Just a bigger size of the check glass bead. These are beautiful, clear with that fire polish on them. And all I did was just use some eye pins and make made just a beaded link and stuck it on an ear wire. Okay, so doesn't have to be doesn't have to be big and bold and in your face to make a statement. Like these are still beautiful, beautiful earrings. That would be the perfect gift for anybody, or if you are on your way out the door and you need something that goes with your outfit real quick, you could work these up in about 10 minutes. You could have both pairs, maybe even less if you're really good at making loops. All right, so that was Crystal Cavern. Next is Cockatiel. I love this mix. I think it's really, really pretty. So Cockatiel is exactly what it sounds like. It's like lots of grays and yellows and kind of like fiery orange colors. So I did two different styles of necklace with this. It's going to hang sideways on me. Hold on. I'm going to gather the chain up on the back there so you can see it. So this is another Y style necklace where I utilized that hematite color chain, that really small chain, and then I just created links using um, eye pins again with all of the check glass beads in those really beautiful, it's like a smoky silver color, but it also has that kind of golden coppery flash to it. And then the orange that's like a fiery orange. And I just stuck a little tassel down here on the bottom because like I said, all of the mixes do come with, a, with some tassels as well. And they're the little tassels, which are just cutie patootie. So yeah, I really, really loved this necklace. I thought it was a great one too. Okay, so that was one and then totally different look but same colorway was this one and again this is another one that is really versatile you can shorten this up you can wear this as a choker or you can wear it long and all I did was just take some eye pins thread on my beads make a loop at the end and then I just cut short chain sections to go in between them so it's it's minimal <laughs> Obviously, I mean, that's what we're going for, but it still makes a statement. So I don't know. I know I keep saying that, but it really took me a took me a minute to kind of wrap my brain around. It doesn't have to be bold and powerful and in your face to still be gorgeous. So I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I have seen the ways of minimalist jewelry. <laughs> and it really is great because it's it's lightweight. Sometimes it's just, you know... Big, bold jewelry I love and I will forever love, but there is something to be said about a lightweight necklace that you can throw on that looks really good and you don't have to think about it anymore for the rest of the day. You don't have to fuss with it or any of that. All right, so Glacier's Edge. This is another beautiful blue mix. This is a deeper color than the Mermaid's Tail. The Mermaid's Tail is more on the green side, whereas Glacier's Edge is more on the blue side. So I just made some really, really easy oval-shaped hoop earrings and I really, all I did was just thread the beads on. I did add four millimeter jump rings to each one of the tassels, but I just thread those on. I mean, super, super simple, easy, but really beautiful, right? I mean, these are really, these are great earrings. Not everything that's beautiful has to be hard. I say that all the time, but I have to remind myself that. So I went ahead and made another necklace very similar to the first one that I showed you in the brown. I did this with the blue and I did it with silver chain and I did three layers instead of the two just to kind of show you a different, <laughs> it does lay correctly, I promise. It's just the way that I'm holding it. Um, so we've got the tassel on the top layer. Again, I use the stamping blank that you can get on Jesse James Speeds. This is just the little small one with the single stamp and then just 
five of that beautiful, it's like a deep, deep blue, but kind of a an ocean glacier blue, if you will, going back to the name. <laughs> so I've got the three layers here. They're all attached together, so it's not really a, um, a piece that you would layer itself. Like, it's not three individual strands. Like, all three strands, you can see, are together with just one clasp. But you can do it however you wanted to. Um, all right, moving on. So we've done Coco, we've done Mermaid's Tail, Crystal Cavern, Cockatiel, Glacier's Edge. That leaves us with Pink Peach Champagne. And I'll show you one of the necklaces and then we're actually gonna make the other one. So this was another really kind of simple but fun way to utilize all of the beads, just a single strand necklace. I used eye pins and just made a beaded chain out of a lot of the beads and I still had beads left over. So I know that looks like a lot of beads, but trust me, these little packages are stuffed full of beads and I have ton of tassels as well. So I could have added tassels to this if I wanted to take it like one step above what minimalist was, <laughs> which I really wanted to do, but I had to talk myself out of it keeping with the theme, but the colors here are really, really beautiful. This peachy champagne is definitely on the coral side of peach. You've got these darker peach tones here, and they work all the way through winter, if you ask me. Coral is one of those colors that you can really get away with wearing all the time, so I don't, I don't necessarily just see this as spring and summer. But yeah, just kind of mixed up the beads, really no rhyme or reason. There is a little bit of symmetry going on here because it's hard to not be symmetrical, but you know, as far as the design is concerned, it's just really, really super simple stuff. And it was a little on the short side, so I added some ball chain to the back. You could add any of the chains if you wanted to. I just didn't want it to be choker style. I wanted it to be just a little bit longer, so that's why I went with the chain on the back. But, so that's that. The last one, Thank you, Linda. The last one is a Lariat style necklace. I know some of you saw it because you voted on it. It is a long chain. We're gonna use one of the really, really tiny chains and we're gonna run it through a large jump ring. You can use a solid ring, you can use you know whatever you've got. I'm just using a larger jump ring for this. And um, at the bottom of the original, I actually added a piece of excuse me, <laughs> added a piece of flat artistic wire that I hammered and added this like model -y kind of textured look to it. But you can also stamp on this. So unfortunately I only have one of these out and it's stuck to my block, I'll show it to you. So I'm using one of the long rectangular um, stamping blanks that you can get over at jessiejamespeeds.com. Use that 33% off and I, um, have taped it down. We're going to, we're going to stamp a letter here, a letter, not a letter, a word with letters. <laughs> so that's how I'm kind of changing this design up just a little bit. So this, it's pretty much the same thing. It's just the difference in what's going to hang at the bottom. So there was a yes or, a, or a quick link. Yes, Kelly, that would be, yeah, you could definitely use a quick link for that. Um, Jane asked a really good question. How are you attaching the ball chain? So every one of the little chain, packages that you're going to get, particularly the ball chain. The ball chain comes with ball chain ends and I'll zoom you like when we're turned around, I'll show you what the ball chain ends look like, but you get, I don't remember how many you get, but you get a little package of ball chain ends with those and with the very small, like tiny um, link chains, you also get really tiny, tiny jump rings for those as well. So don't think you're going to get the chain and then not have any way to work with it because you do get the pieces that you need, which is super handy and really smart if you ask me. So um, yeah, but if for some reason you run out, you can always wire wrap that last ball with a 24 or 26, I probably go with the 26 gauge um, wire of some sort. You can wire wrap that last ball and create a wrapped loop and just use it that way if you wanted to. But you do have plenty of the end pieces and I'll show them to you. All right, so let's flip around. Let's go real quick through the beads and then let's make a necklace. And the necklace is not going to take us any time at all. So, all righty. Let's go, you guys. Okay. So, I have kind of a mess here. But, 
so the Caramel and Coco, this was the first that I showed you. These were the two necklaces. And let me adjust the light just a little bit. I don't know, this afternoon light in here is just really weird. So you can see it has the browns and the gold colors. Those were the beads. So you've got your tassels and then all kinds of, all, all kinds of, all shades of browns and golds and like amber colors. So this was a really, really beautiful mix. And there are obviously some beads missing because I've used some of them, but they are stuffed full. That's that one bead that has that like, um, it's that frosted glass, but then it has that kind of gold amber kiss of color right on the end. I just think that's a really, really beautiful bead. It's one of my favorites out of this mix for sure. And I love the tassels that have that, they're cream brown, gold, kind of tan color. Just really really pretty like the mixes are absolutely stunning so this was the browns that's the caramel and cocoa if you're looking for that one and let me just move this over here it's gonna take too long for me to put everything back in the bag I'll try to move as quickly as possible I'll not have to keep you guys around forever all right so the next one was the mermaid's tail and Again, this is on the green side, kind of frosty, teal greens, just really beautiful. Let me dump out what we've got here. So this has, this has some really deep, deep blue greens in it, as well as like the turquoise colored beads. And then this guy, this is the one that I used in the necklace. It's clear, but it has that metallic inside to it. And then it also has the fire polish on the outside which I know is hard to see with my big fingers in the way, but just really a beautiful bead. Like it has depth and dimension just in the bead itself, just the way that it is created. Just really, really beautiful. Got some of the little mini tassels as well as the flower tassels. So this is a really beautiful mix. And when Sarah sent me the um, these mixes, I told her, and again, I hate to be talking about the holidays so early, but... These mixes, if you are making your Christmas wish list or you know somebody that you are putting together a little package for for Christmas, these make great stocking stuffers. The, these little minimal minimalist <laughs> collection beads, they fit perfectly down inside a stocking. So just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. So this is the Crystal Cavern. Has lots of whites and clear and silver and it's just classy. Like, I don't know, that silver color. Hi, Katie. That silver color is just really, really beautiful. And they're, again, the same kind of bead. It's got that metallic finish just on the outside on one edge. The metallic finish you can see through to the inside. So it really does kind of look like a piece of ice. Really, really awesome. And then the frosted, I love the frosted glass, check glass beads. I just think they're awesome. So this is another beautiful, beautiful mix. All right, moving on, we're gonna look at the cockatiel mix next. Now this is one where there's not a lot of beads left because I have used quite a bit of them, but um, you still get an idea of the, the colorway that's here. I do have lots of the tassels left though. But you can see, so there's more beads, obviously. I have used a, a lot out of this. But it's that fiery orange. You've got these gold yellow colors. The, the yellow is not like yellow. It's more of a, um, a golden type color. So that's the colorway. You've got just this regular fiery orange. But then you have the ones that have that double colorway to them. It has a little bit of the yellow and a little bit of the orange in all in one bead, which is really awesome. So that is the cockatiel. You do have the pops of gray because, you know, I don't know if any of you have ever had a cockatiel or seen a cockatiel, but they do have that gray in there, which I think was a really great addition to that mix. I don't know, it just really makes it. All right, Glacier's Edge. We're almost to the end. This is the one with the blues. And again, the beads are just so beautiful. Look at the frosted glass. 
that just screams ice and glaciers. Like Jesse James Speed's team, they know what they're doing. The names for these mixes are no accident. Look at that. It just makes you feel like cold weather, snow. Yeah, they're beautiful. Really, really beautiful. And then there's like that aquamarine color. Some deeper blues. They're like a denim color. Just a really, really beautiful mix. And then, of course, you get all the tassels as well. I love, 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 love. So the check glass beads, that's kind of the... Um, the main bead here as far as these minimal beads are concerned. So a couple of things about the check glass beads. Um, Jesse James beads, check glass beads are top notch when it comes to quality. And I can say that with I, my whole heart <laughs> because I have been in this business for a very, very long time and I have been exposed to, this is peach champagne by the way. Um, I have been exposed to a ton of check glass beads over the past 10 years or more and quality counts when it comes to check glass beads. So all of the check glass that I have ever encountered from Jesse James Beads has been spot on as far as quality is concerned. The drill on them is perfect. The holes are drilled perfectly. I've not ever had any that had, um, you know, where one side wasn't drilled all the way through, which is one of the things that tends to happen with check glass beads when the quality is not so great. All of the shapes are spot on. And of course the finishes on them are perfect as well. I've not run into any of these that I would consider duds and that's hard to do with check glass. That's just the nature of check glass beads. They come from um, a place where <laughs> the amount of beads that are coming out of that area are, um, I can't even begin to articulate the number, the sheer number of beads, um, check glass beads that there are. And so, getting good quality is a big deal. Just so you guys know. I mean, you guys know I love Jesse James beads. Um, regardless, their beads could be, you know, not so great and I'd still love them. But the truth is, is that these beads are perfect. <laughs> I mean, as perfect as a bead can be. Okay. Let's, let's be serious here. Um, but the check glass that Jesse James beads has, that was just my point. I, I went the long way around to say that, but they're really good really, really exceptional check glass beads. And check glass beads are a great base to um, your bead supply. You know, check glass beads are great in between your big focal beads. They're also great extension of your gemstone beads and things like that. So check glass is one of those things that I like to stock up on and this minimalistic collection is a really great way to stock up on your bead supply and have a great mix of colors that you can use you know, intertwined with other things. All right, so let's talk about the necklace that we're gonna make. So I have this really long piece of chain. Um, I'm not entirely sure how long this piece of chain is. And before we move on, I did want to show you guys the little tiny jump ring that I was talking about. See that little bitty jump ring? That was included with the chain. So I don't have to go through my stash and see if I have a jump ring that small. It's already there for me. There's a little package of them that comes with the chain. Same with the ball chain, let me show you. So the ball chain comes with the little covers that go over the end of the ball chain. So it's basically just a, a little cup that that last ball will fit into and then you close it over that ball using a pair of tweezers or your fingers. You can see what it looks like on the side. And then it also has a hole through it that is big enough for any size jump ring that you've got, okay? So any of the ball chain is gonna come with the, with the ends. So when you're, taking the, um, when you're taking the chain out of the package, be careful because the package that contains the ball chain ends and the little jump rings, it's a tiny little package. Don't accidentally throw it away. Watch for it because it is uh, definitely a necessity when it comes to using the really tiny chains. Okay, so we're gonna use this really long piece of chain. I'm not sure about the length. This is one of those things that you can cut it to whatever length you want it to be. The longer, the better. Yeah, it's very similar, Jane, to a clamshell end. Very, very similar, but it is shaped specifically 
for the ball chain, um, and it comes in the different sizes specific to the ball chain that you buy, right? So this one is a little bit bigger than the silver one that I had. So that ball chain just fits perfectly in there. But yeah, you're right. It is very, 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 very similar to a clamshell. All right, so the next thing we've got is our stamping blank. And this is just a rectangle. I know it's hard to see because I already have it taped down onto my block, but it's just a rectangle. It's got a hole on one end. So we're gonna hang that at the bottom of our chain. Um, that's what's gonna keep the chain from going back through that jump ring. Um, just a note on the other one that I, I the, in the picture, I didn't use a blank. I used a piece of flat artistic wire that you can also get from Jesse James Speeds and I hammered it. I just used the ball side of my hammer, put it down on the block and gave it some texture. You can also stamp on this as well, okay? So there's a lot of different options here, um, but we're gonna stamp on this one. So I went ahead and laid this down and I used a stamping guide that you can also get on Jesse James Speeds um, from Impress Art. And the stamp guide has a, a little bit of everything in it, which is so convenient. So it comes with the circles for your cir circular blanks and you'll see how it has the lines that go all the way around. So you put this on your circular blank so that you can grid out your letters or your stamp shapes or whatever you've got. And it comes in different sizes to go with, see there are some larger ones to go with the different sized blanks, even the big ones. And then for this in particular, I'm using the sticker that is, uh, it just kind of looks like the, a piece of a ruler. So you lay this down, find the middle, and then if you wanted to, you can draw out the letters with a pen so that you stamp exactly where you have drawn out, or you can just use the, the marks as your guide. And not only does it have those, but then it also has these, which are so convenient. So for the uh, mandala style stamping or any kind of stamping on the round that you want to do, this is a sticker that is actually clear. And you put this, you lay this over your um, stamping blank and it, it grids the whole circle out for you so that you can stamp in between the spaces. It, everything is nice and even. Um, and you actually stamp on top of the sticker, and then when you're done, you just pull the sticker away. So that's that's really, really handy. And you can see like the first few pages of this I've already used. Like I have used a ton of these, so those are all blank pages. But there's a ton, see, there's a lot left. More blank ones in the back with so many that I've used. But this is just a really handy thing. So if you are shopping on the, um, the stamp stuff, do yourself a favor and grab the stamp guide. It will save you so much trouble. It really, really makes your stamping much easier. And I'm, I'm terrible at stamping, so take my word for it. Even with it gridded out, I have not stamped in a minute. So this is, <laughs> there's no telling how this is going to turn out, but that's okay. So another thing that is definitely worth getting is the tape. That's what I have here on the edges. And it is just a stretchy tape for stamping. Uh, taping down whatever blanks you're using to your block so they don't move on you. Um, but the great thing about it is that it does not leave any sticky goo. You know, it doesn't leave that nasty residue behind. It comes off clear, which is great because you don't want to have to get that stuff off of your stamp. So I've got my hammer ready to go. You can see how much stamping I've done. I mean, I have had this forever. And my block. So we are just gonna stamp a, a simple little word. I just pulled out the letters to stamp the word sweet. I know that's kind of silly, but it was just a last minute choice. I am using some of the typewriter font stamps. So I pulled out the S, the W, the E, and the T. And I like to start in the middle, so we're gonna start with one of the E's in the middle, okay? And just a side note, I marked all of mine so I know which direction. It's just a, it's just a little dot of permanent marker to uh, remind me which direction to hold my stamp. So the mark side, I want it facing away from me. Uh, some of the other stamps are have the words impress art on them and that needs to come towards you, but these letters didn't. So I marked them for myself and if you get them, mark them for yourself as well. It saves you some time. So we're gonna start with the E, um, the one that is in the middle of the word. 
And I have marked out that the middle is here where that orange line is. And a good rule of thumb, <laughs> now like I said, this may go downhill very, very quickly. I, I have not stamped in quite some time, okay? So I'm, I'm fresh at this. It might be a little on the crooked side even with a sticker. But a good rule of thumb is to put your stamp right over the line and then you want it to go up against the very edge of your stamp guide. So you are actually gonna feel the resistance of the tape on your blank. That's where you wanna stop and then you want to hammer. And actually before I do that, let me move you guys so that we do not bang into the iPod, iPad. That would be very, very bad. All right, so I'm just gonna place that down and I'm holding it still. And there goes the E. Oh, I'm almost scared to look. Oh, it is a little crooked, but that's all right. That's okay. It looks pretty good. All right, so now I'm just gonna work outwards. Just going right next to that E to do the other E. You wanna give it a nice hard tap, uh, more than a tap. I mean, you really wanna whack it, but you wanna be sure that it's just one smooth movement. Um, and you definitely don't wanna move your stamp for any reason, okay? Don't try to put pick up your stamp and then line it back up and stamp again. You'll never get it in the same place. So there's my other E, okay? Now we are ready for the T, and then we'll go back the other direction. And I actually, I have these, the letters are a little bit further apart than I wanted them to be, but that's okay. That's okay. There's no judgments here. I know how you guys are. You're always so sweet, and that's why I'm writing the word sweet today, because <laughs> you guys are so sweet. All right, so moving back on the other side of that first E that we did, and we're going to put our W in. Not a W in. We're going to put our W into the blank. Like, okay, yeah, you knew what I meant. <laughs> There's the W. And last but not least, we're gonna add the S. Now the S is definitely one that you wanna mark because it never fails. I'll put the S down the wrong direction and then my S is backwards or, uh, yeah, it's just bad. So definitely mark your stamps. That is probably my number one tip for all of this. Mark those stamps. All right, so it's not exactly straight, but you guys can see with just a little bit more practice, like I said, it's been a minute since I've done this, but with a little bit more practice, that could have been very easily nice and lined up and good to go, but we're gonna go with it, it's fine. And it is a little too far up, but hey, we're fine with it, I'm not mad at it. <laughs> Okay, so your stamp, you can leave it just like this if you want to, or you can add patina paint to it, and it will sit down inside the grooves of your stamp, or, um, did I get a piece of paper towel? I did. You can also use the enamel marker, which I think is super handy. So the enamel marker, don't use this in place of a permanent marker because this stuff is different. It's enamel, obviously. And once it's on there and it dries, it's not going anywhere. But it's got a ball in it, so you can shake it up and make sure that it's nice and mixed up before you use it. And you're just going to use it just like you with the patina paint. You're just going to color in and wipe away. And I like to do a little bit at a time. Oh, my marker. My marker's a little dry. It's been a while. All right, so mine won't, might not be the best, but so you can see, well, babe, oh, there you go. See how it is that color, that enamel is getting down inside the grooves, and it's just gonna help to make those letters really pop. So that's gonna lay down inside the stamp mark itself. You can do the border as well. I do a little bit and then wipe and then do a little bit more and wipe. And I don't know if you notice or not, but the, um, the tip of this marker is interchangeable. Like there's another one. I probably need to change the tip of mine. This one's just a little bit smaller. It has that real nice precision point on it. So you can very easily take this out and change the tip of the marker if you want to.
All right, so mine's not the greatest, but you guys get the idea. I really, really like having the enamel marker. For one thing, it I can stick it where all the rest of my pins are. I don't have to find a special place for this to go. It's right here where all of the other pins that I have are. So it's, it's really handy, and you can, you know, throw it in your bag, and you've got it ready to go. And it does wash off. <laughs> All right, so let's put together the necklace. So we've got the really, really long part of our necklace and we are going to attach this to this on one end. And we are gonna add a couple of little beads to this just for fun. So I've got an eye pin that's ready to go, okay? And I'm just gonna throw three of these beads I don't know what's happened to my beads. I think they all got mixed together. That's okay. So I'm gonna thread on three of these really pretty little four millimeter coral beads. These are from the Peach Champagne Mix. Okay. And so now I just wanna create a closed loop, just a simple loop. We're not gonna do a wrapped loop on this. So I'm gonna grab that wire right above the bead as it is exiting. Gonna hold the beads in my fingers. And I'm just gonna bend that wire 90 degrees. Now this is not like a normal wrapped loop that you guys see me do over and over again. There's no wrapping with this one, so that bend needs to happen right over the top of that bead. Okay, then I'm gonna come in with my cutter tool and I am going to cut away, leaving myself about a fourth of an inch. Okay, and then I'm gonna use my round nose pliers to grab the tip of that wire. And then I'm just gonna roll that wire back towards the beads to create a closed loop that matches the loop on the bottom. Whoops, okay. So now this is ready to go. We're gonna use a really small jump ring for this. Now you can use a four millimeter for this. I grabbed a three, I don't know why, I just did. Sometimes I wonder about the choices that I make for these videos, but, and I'm lost a pair of pliers. All right. <laughs> So I'm just using a really, really small jump ring here. I'm just gonna hook that to one of those. And actually, you know what? Let's hook it to the stamp first. And actually a four millimeter jump ring might've been a better choice. No, there's still plenty of room. All right, so I'm, like I said, I, I just picked a three. A four would, would do just as well. Then I'm gonna hook that little beaded link on, okay? And now we need to attach this to the end of our chain. And we're gonna wait to do that part because we actually wanna thread this through the larger jump ring first. Okay, so let's sit this to the side for just a second. Hi, Suzanne. And let's attach a larger jump ring. So this is gonna work as um, the ring portion of our lariat style necklace and I'm going to slip that through that little tiny jump ring on the end of the chain okay and then I'm just going to close that back make sure you get a good close on that you want it to be as seamless as possible because this does show this is part of the design okay so keep that in mind when you're closing that jump ring you should always make sure you've got a good close on your jump rings but particularly when they show okay so I added some dangles to this in the original design, but since then, I have lost some of my beads. I think they rolled off into the floor. So we're only gonna do two, but on the original design, I had three. But it's just as good, it's just as good. So I'm just using a head pin. I'm gonna thread on one of these little coral beads, again, to match the ones on the bottom. Let's do two. I originally had four, but I have no idea where those beads have slipped away to. All right, so for this one I am going to use, I am going to do a, um, a wrapped loop, and I should not have closed my jump ring yet, but that's okay, we'll open it. Y'all don't tell anybody, okay? <laughs> All right, so I'm grabbing that, that wire as it's exiting the bead. I'm gonna bend the wire 90 degrees. This time we are leaving space to do our wrapped loop. Coming in. With my round nose pliers, I'm gonna go up and over and then on around. Okay, I'm gonna switch hands and then I'm gonna use a pair of chain nose pliers to do the wrapping and I've got room to do about three wraps. Okay, take that off and trim off the tail. So the great thing about the designs that I have shown you guys is that they will work 
with any of these mixes. Um, you literally can do any of the, let's see, how many designs did I show you? Two, four, six, eight, ten. Was it ten or twelve? It might have been twelve. But they will work with any of the minimal minimalist collection. So you can recreate this design or any of the other ones, regardless of whether you buy the peach champagne or the cockatiel. Um, just mix up your beads, because, you know, why not? Oh, that would be cool to mix two or three of these colors together. You know, the colorways, that would be awesome. I would definitely mix together like the Crystal Cavern and the Glacier's Edge. That would be a really pretty combination for sure. I would mix together the Caramel and Cocoa and the Peach Champagne. They would all be really pretty together. All right, so again, just wire wrapping. <clears throat> I was doing more talking than I was paying attention to what I was doing. So my loop is a little off, but that's okay. All is forgiven. So I'm gonna trim that tail. Okay. And now I, I'm gonna break my own rule and open up this jump ring, even though I said, <laughs> even though I said you should never do this, but I'm gonna open that back up. And I'm gonna thread these little guys on. These are just little extra dangles, just some extra, because we are extra. All right, so I'm gonna close that back. Now, I'm gonna take my long section of chain and I'm gonna thread it through that jump ring. And it's important that I do this first because once I attach this stamp blank to the bottom, it will not fit back through that loop, which is good when you're wearing the jewelry, but not necessarily good when you're trying to put the jewelry together. So remember to do that last, okay? So this is how you're gonna adjust the length of your necklace. You're just gonna tighten up the length by pulling on this bottom chain. And down here at the bottom, we need to attach our stamp to our chain. I'm gonna open up that loop with a pair of pliers, and I opened it laterally. Okay, don't, don't try to pull it apart. And then I'm just gonna slip that on to the very last link of my chain, and then close it back very, very carefully. And the necklace is done. That was easy peasy. There is absolutely nothing to that, but you've got a very trendy, this is a, a seriously on trend design. And it's one of those designs that is, I see whether it's, you know, 2014 or 2019, almost into 2020, like this style of necklace is one that is not going anywhere. Just like tassels, just like minimalist jewelry in general. It's a style that can be reworked and, you know, freshened up as the seasons change, but it's one of those styles that the base design is gonna stick around and be, be popular for ever and ever, at least until somebody comes up with something that looks <laughs> just exactly the same, but different, if that makes any sense. <laughs> All right. So, I'm going to flip you guys back around. Hello, my darlings. All right. So, this has been a fun one. I, I was challenged, for sure, uh, trying to come up with minimalist jewelry, but I think that I, I think I worked it out pretty good. I think I came up with several designs that are easy to do that I think you guys can recreate or that you can take and use, um, you know, in your jewelry designs in other ways. Just like I said, it doesn't have to be big and bold and in your face to be beautiful and make a statement. Sometimes, I hate to admit it, sometimes less is more. <laughs> and you guys will probably never hear me say that again, but it's true. Check out these beads. This whole minimalist collection is really, really stunning. The bead mixes are to die for. The color schemes are absolutely beautiful. You can mix, you can match, you can add these to your stash to build up what you've already got. Take advantage of the 33% off. That sale ends at midnight tonight, so do not miss out on that. Sarah only turns 33 once, <laughs> right? <laughs> so go help celebrate her birthday until midnight. Take advantage of that. Add some of the stamping stuff to your cart. Add some of the minimalist collection. Last chance to grab some of that Halloween stuff. You guys, that stuff is almost gone and you will regret it if you have not already bought it. Trust me, I know because it's awesome stuff. 
All right, so that's it for me. I'm so glad that you guys joined me here on a Tuesday afternoon. It was very, very good to see all of you. It's always a pleasure, always fun, very much appreciated. So I will see you guys again on Thursday. Don't forget, 11 a.m. I will be right back here with a new project for you guys. I'm going through, I'm gonna unbox the Magical Mystery Bee Box for the month of October. It was a special request I asked if I could. And so I'm, I'm really excited. If you guys haven't seen this one yet, oh, it's, it's, it's a good one. Like, I think this might be the best. <laughs> I think this might be the best one yet. So don't forget to check me out on Thursday and you guys have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the afternoon and I will see you guys again soon. Bye guys.